Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm the founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Donna Doyle, who's one of the legends of copywriting and direct response marketing. Donna has written winning re direct response copy for over two decades and has been freelancing for over 14 years. Her clients include some of the biggest names in alternative health, specialty food, and many more. She was honored as Copywriter of the Year by the American Writers and Artists Institute, AWAI. She wrote nearly all of Prentice Hall's profitable control packages that ran for years. Within three years, Prentice Hall's health and self-improvement product line grew from 2.5 million in sales to over 13 million annually. Donna, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you, Jeremy, for asking me. Um, so I'm excited to hear your big lessons you learned along your journey, mistakes, successes, what worked, what didn't work. And I always like to include a fun fact. And you have an interesting fun fact, actually. Not that others aren't, but <laughs> Donna loves old graveyards. Yes, So explain I that. I wish I was I so tempted to ask you that right when you told me, <laughs> but I held off. So now tell me. Um, for some reason, I find old graveyards fascinating. The older, the better. Um, right up the street from me, there's a graveyard that dates back from the turn of the century, and that is the turn of the 1800s. Um, and I don't know why I find them so fascinating. I think I like go in there and my writer's mind starts working and I think, well, what did this person die of? What were they like when they were alive? How old were they? And I start thinking of all different things. Um, when I was in England many years ago, I passed by a graveyard that was from the mid 1600s and I'm, and I'm like, stop, I have to look at this. And I just went into this graveyard and looked around. I just find them fascinating. I mean, you're in the alternative health space. I could see, well, she's a mystery writer, but <laughs> how, does that help you in your copy at all? Or how have you used graveyards in your alternative supplement? Cause you do a lot of supplements and things like yes, that. Yes, I do. It's a supplements and alternative health. Um, I really don't use it, but I think I, I, it must be in my subconscious mind somewhere because I think, gee, this person only died at 30. What did they die of? What diseases did they have back then? And I just find the whole thing just so fascinating. So why and alternative health? I just kind of fell into it. Um, when I was young, I always had an interest in health. I once wanted to be a nurse at one point and I just was interested in health and then I got my job at Prentice Hall and they had a line of alternative health books mm -hmm. and I just thought it was so much more fun writing about those than the typical education textbooks that they had me write about and that's kind of how I fell into it. Yeah. So who influenced you growing up? Um, I'd say that I always had a very close family, you know, the typical Italian family, all very close and very interwoven, uh, so that was definitely an influence there. Uh, but I always had this fascination for writing. I mean, I think I wrote my first short story when I was eight years old. And I always kind of puttered around, and what writer doesn't have some big story in them? And I knew I wanted to get into writing, but I wasn't quite sure how. Uh, and then when I found Direct Response, then I started finding all the influences in the business. Um, the Herschel Gordon Lewis and Joan Throckmorton, and it just seemed to be such a great match for me. And that's what really started um, my career. I mean, so did someone in your family, were they a writer? How did you even... It's really strange. I am the only writer in my family, but I come from a line of very creative people. My father was an artist. Uh, my grandfather was a band leader. Uh, a lot of uncles on my dad's sides were uh, played different instruments. You know, one played the violin, one played the harp, and we all, I guess that all of that creative energy just kind of filtered through. Yeah. And it came out with me in writing because I cannot draw to save my life. <laughs> Were they from uh, the U.S. or are they from Italy? My dad was born here. Okay. Uh, my grandparents were born in Italy but came here 
um, when they were like two. I asked because a lot of times when people come from Europe, you know, there's kind of like a tradition of storytelling. And I feel like sometimes people get into writing and storytelling because of the, the culture. But, oh, um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. What about, so when you, you first got into um, copywriting, when? Uh, I'd say in 1990. Um, I had worked in various staff jobs in um, magazine publishing. This is when I lived in Chicago. Yeah. And I worked in um, various magazine companies promoting their editorial calendar. It was more like a, a promotional position. What I did was write up um, information that the sales staff can use to market to people to buy space. So what kind of stuff, um, so what was some of the stuff that you remember that you worked on or helped them sell space? Uh, things like, um, here's what's coming up in our July issue. Uh, it would be highlighting the different features they were going to promote that month. And then it would say, you know, buy space now. Uh, another thing we would do is um, cute little promotional gifts that we would send out once a year. Uh, so I would be handling that, you know, getting these little tchotchkes to, to send out to everyone. Uh, trade shows. I worked a lot of trade shows, which was a great experience because it helps you deal with people and deal with the public. And writing tends to be a very solitary occupation. Uh, but having good people skills is important, as you know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur or in any type of business, really. So the trade show experience was very good for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, I got married in the beginning of 1989 and moved back to New Jersey. And I was looking for a job that was kind of close to home. Um, at the time, I was commuting into Manhattan, which was a big drain and a big time waste, as, as anyone who commutes into a big city knows. And my husband uh, was looking through the New York Times, and he says, look, this is a really good job for you. Prentice Hall is looking for copywriters. And I'm like, oh, and they're five minutes from the house. Wow. Let's try and see. So I applied and I got the job. And that is when I first heard of direct mail. I never knew that there were books that were marketed by mail. And Prentice Hall is very well known for their educational textbooks, yeah. but there was this tiny little division literally in the basement of the building where they sold books through the mail and that's where I first learned copywriting and it was such a great match for me and I had fun I enjoyed it so what kind of books did you uh, work on well the first ones were educational type of books but they were activity books uh, for teachers they were marketed to teachers to help you know here are some great math activities here are some great science activities books along that vein but what I really really wanted was to start writing on some of the alternative health books mm -hmm. uh, we had book titles called um, Heinemann's Encyclopedia of Natural Medicines and we had you know herbal healing it from your own backyard titles like that that mm -hmm. I just found fascinating and I begged my boss for probably about a year please let me let me try one you know l let me just try one of those titles if it works great if it doesn't okay and I tried it and it wound up working fantastic then they gave me another book and another book and soon I was writing all of the promotional direct mail copy for their line of alternative health books. Wow. So to walk me through when you said, when you begged them and they let you, you know, write for one of the books, walk me through that process. What were you doing and what was one of those campaigns that you worked on? Well, the first one was for a uh, book called Heinerman's Encyclopedia of Fruits, Vegetables, and Herbs. And a freelance copywriter did the original mailing and it worked okay, but fatigued very quickly. So they were looking for a different spin on it. And I figured that was my opportunity. And I just went to my boss and I said, please, I really know I can do it. Let me do it. I had a passion for it. And that's really the biggest key. You have to be passionate about what you're writing about or else that's going to show through. So he said, okay, give it a shot. Um, he gave me the manuscript because at that point in time, you know, we would write from the manuscript. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. The finished book wasn't ready yet, and it wouldn't be ready for another few months, but at least we had the promotional material done. And I would just go through the manuscript, flag with post-it notes different things, and then just write the promotional piece. And it wound up doing very, very well. Um, what also helped was seeing what competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the time, our biggest competitors were Rodale and Boardroom. They, they're still big competitors even today. And I would go and see what they were doing. Um, Gene Schwartz was also huge back then. He was a big influence in my career. He's best known for that wonderful mailing, How to Burn Disease Out of Your Body, mm -hmm. uh, which is hard to find now. You can find, them in, find it in books, but that was legendary in direct mail. And I got that mailing and studied it and tried to see what his techniques were and I tried to duplicate his techniques. So what were some of the things you found? What were some of the techniques that you tried to do or that you duplicated in in your writings? Uh, the fascinations. Eugene Schwartz and Boardroom had a wonderful way of writing fascinations, those teasing little bullets that get you interested and want you to read more. Mm -hmm. uh, I just practiced and practiced until I was satisfied that mine were almost as good as theirs. Uh, and just learning different things about writing direct response, that whole conversational way of writing. Uh, in school, most of us learn how to write editorially. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here are the facts, you know, the who, what, when, where. Uh, there's a big lead up before you get into the guts of the copy. What Prentice Hall taught me to do was just cut to the chase. Uh, you know, direct mail is all about establishing a relationship between you and your reader. And they taught me how to do that and write conversationally. And that method of writing came very naturally to me. Uh, so once I got, kind of got that down, it was really practice after that. So what were some of the components that you remember that copy? Like what were some of the things specifically that you wrote in there that you were proud of? Wow. Um, okay, we're talking probably about <laughs> 20 years ago yeah. now. <laughs> um, I don't remember. Or we could talk to maybe one of the more recent ones. Okay, one of the more recent ones is actually a mailing that I took out this morning, which did really, really well. It was for a liver supplement. Yeah. And those kind of supplements are very hard to write for because they're preventative. People don't know they have liver problems. They can't really feel a difference. Um, so that's a challenge when you write for something like that. So I, I ran this by a colleague, and we talked about it, and we brainstormed. And we came up with a headline that looks like this. And I hope the, the webcam can see it. Yeah, yeah. I see a healthy liver, and I see a really bad liver. Exactly. And it's if you're like most people over 40, your liver probably looks like this, when it should look like this. And I'm like, all right, you know, let's show the client and see how it works. And it wound up that it did fantastic. Nice. And it's been a control for about three years now. It does still mail on occasion, not as much as it did. Um, but coming up with things that turn out to be huge controls and make a lot of money for my clients are terrific. My very first uh, project for Prentice Hall, this Heinerman's Encyclopedia of Fruits, Vegetables, and Herbs, wound up becoming a control for almost 10 years. Wow. And there was a follow-up book to that, Heinerman's Encyclopedia of Healing Juices. That was a control for five years. Wow. So things like that were really so rewarding for me. And I'd say that the tide turned when I was at six, I was at Prentice Hall for about seven or eight months. And my boss called me into his office and he had me sit down. And that, you know, that always makes you nervous. Yeah. When your boss calls you into the office. It's really good or really bad. Right, right, right. And he's looking at my copy and he goes, Donna, you know what your problem is? And I said, what? You think we sell books here? And I'm like, yeah. And he said, well, we don't sell books here. I'm like, okay, then what do we do? He said, we sell ways to help people 
save time, save money, or make their job easier. The book is the vehicle to do that, but that's not what you're selling. You're selling them things that can help make their life better. Mm -hmm. Once he told me that, it was like a light bulb went off in my head. And that's what really made my direct mail career take off. Yeah. That's what I try to tell everyone today. You know, you're not selling a book. You're not selling a supplement. You're not selling a, a medical product. You're selling a way to help someone look younger, feel better, get more energetic, change their life, really. So I have a question about the liver, the liver campaign. Yes. So I'm always curious of, because obviously it goes through a lot of iterations and you spent a lot of time on it. What was one, were there any pictures that you started with and ah, that doesn't work? You know, I want to kind of hear your thought process through what ended up as the, the final version. Okay. Uh, what I normally do is try to think of a few different headlines uh, to start off with. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a lot of them are very sketchy. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. But I don't spend a lot of time on that. The most important part is really that lead, that hook that's going to get your reader involved very quickly. So I look through a lot of competitive mailings and I spend the most time on the lead. There could be times, and there have been times, that I've had nothing more than dear friend on my computer for two days. That's how important the lead is. Uh, I try to get the ideas by doing a lot of research into the ingredients, speaking to the client, um, finding out, you know, the typical USP. And then once I find my hook, I just start writing the copy. It takes about a month for me to put together a promotion like this liver promotion. Uh, and then I like to work with the, with the client and directly with the designer to come up with the different pictures. Mm -hmm. So what got chopped off? What was on the chopping block before you, you chose that? <coughs> um, you know, there were really just a few different things. One thing that I chopped off was a questionnaire. Sometimes I'll put an involvement device in there like a questionnaire, but I tend to write too much, so there are things that you have to cut. Uh, the questionnaire was always something that I like to cut. Um, in one way, it's a great involvement device, mm -hmm. so people can notice how they feel when they take the product. But the other part of that um, is, well, why do you want to give someone an excuse to return it? So that's usually the first thing to come off the chopping block. Um, sometimes you can get too far into the whole science and the clinical studies, which clients love, but they can get too dry. But the people and don't care as much about them. Exactly, exactly. So you want to present those simply. I like to present no more than two clinical studies about an ingredient and put it in terms that are really simple for everyone to understand. Mm -hmm. So I probably just get rid of, of those. And I come up with something that's about 8,000, 8,500 words at the very end. Um, I present it to the client and usually my first drafts are pretty tight. Uh, if there are anything, any changes, they're for the most part pretty minor. Mm -hmm. And then it goes off to the design. Mm -hmm. um, and just like with the writers, you know who the best designers are. And I've worked with most of the best designers in the industry. And they know my style. They know what I like. I know what their style is. Mm -hmm. And we just go back and forth. Yeah. And then it ends up as, voila, this piece. Another thing that I like to do is provide my client with at least three different cover headlines. Uh, this way, they have an option of choosing which one or testing all three. Yeah. Uh, the client for this liver mailing, mm -hmm. we tested five different covers. This was the winner. Uh, so lots of clients do not do enough testing. Yeah. I'm fanatical about doing testing. Yeah. So I have a, um, I have a question about testing. And some, um, what was the campaign that you remember... You tested a few, but you you know you kind of have a sense of uh, my prediction is I think this is going to win, and that one was last. Oh, that has happened so many times, uh, and and that's what makes direct mail. 
there was a promotion that I did for a supplement called DIM. It's an extract of um, what's in broccoli. It's a compound that's supposed to help hormonal balance and energy and all of this stuff. And I presented five different covers. The first cover was a testimonial driven cover. You know, these people are jumping for joy about the miracle of DIM and it had, you know, all their faces and different experiences. And then we tested a few other covers and the other, another cover was one that I presented to the client literally at the last minute. It came out of, it just came out of my head real quick and I, the headline was, it's an outrage, um, you know. Your doctor thinks that your spreading waistline and lack of energy is because you're getting old. It's not. It's because of this. And I'm like, I, I wanted to present him with another headline. We'll see what happens. I swore that the testimonial cover was going to win. Who doesn't love stories? Right. That came in third. The oh. winner was the last minute. It's an outrage cover. And I can't begin to tell you how many times that happens and why I always say to the client, you know, test at least two, if not three covers. Mm -hmm. Just because you and I fall in love with one doesn't mean that's going to be the winner. Right. And a lot of times it isn't. Right. Yeah, that's why I asked about the picture, the liver picture, because I noticed in your site you have a really interesting picture of comparison of comparing, I think it's a liver to changing your oil. The oil filter. The yes. oil filter. Yes. That was also a winning cover for a while. That was the winning cover. Um, yeah, your liver looks a lot like an oil filter, right. except you can change your oil filter. That was a huge winner for a while. And then when that started fatiguing, then we did this second cover. Yeah. And for people who don't know, they can check out Copy by Doyle D. O Y L E, and you have a bunch of really awesome uh, kind of portfolio pieces that you can kind of look through, which are which are really yes. cool. Which I can spend I spent more more time than I should have looking through all those. <laughs> um, but down the other question, so that was a successful campaign. Tell me, I think I can go on and on, but um, tell me about another successful campaign that you're proud of that because I want to hear some of the details about. Okay, um, another successful campaign was for a company called Juvenon, and they're a very good client of mine, and we did a promotion of um, a new product they had called Youthful Energy. Mm -hmm. Is it a supplement or what is it? It is a supplement. Okay. It is a supplement to help their energy, and that one wound up doing really, really well. Um, unfortunately, they decided not to mail it anymore because there were problems with the name and, and things like that. But that worked out really well. Um, another. Tell me about that one. So, what worked well about it? Well, it was a completely different look for the company. Uh, we used a very nice Slim Jim type of cover, a lot of really energetic people shots. You know, when you're marketing to the supplement audience, they tend to be older people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're talking 60s, 70s. So you want to show pictures that are energetic, that are lively, that are, um, they're looking in the camera and having a wonderful life because you want your reader to look at them and say, wow, I'm going to do that too, you yeah. know, and they'll do that by taking the Juvenon Energy Formula. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun to put together as well. Um, but another promotion I'm extremely proud of was a whole new product line for Advanced Bionutritionals. They went into the skincare market mm -hmm. for the first time and I was with them from the beginning. Uh, putting the formula together. We tested different formulas. They had me take it home and try it. Um, is that, that common? That seems like pretty intimate. For, it, for like... it, is, it is pretty intimate. And I worked with these people for a long time, so they kind of trusted me. Got it. And I was their target audience. They wanted me to do the promotions for it. Mm. So I was there at the formula stage. I was there at the naming stage. I did all of the copy that goes on the bottles and on the boxes, wow. which was something I never did before, and that was a lot of fun. And then it came to writing the promotion. Now, clients love skincare products because the margins are really fantastic. 
So you don't have to have a premium price and still make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so we were trying to think of, okay, how do we market this now? And we came up with uh, marketing it as a way of, you know, there's a lot of dangerous products hidden in your skincare, and here's what they are. And then we said, well, this is why System 41 is so great, because it's 100% natural, and it also uses this brand new stem cell technology. So we spoke a lot about this apple and grape stem cell technology. Mm -hmm. And that started an entire new product line for this company, and they're now branching out into other skincare products. Yeah. And that, to me, was just so rewarding to help start a new company line that they never had before. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, what I like about some of your copy is obviously the story, but also the use of pictures in the, in the yes. copy is really powerful. Yes. Um, and and kind of like what you said, I'm curious, you said you worked on the labeling and packaging. So how did you have to kind of get your mindset and what did you include on the packaging as opposed to because you have this long, you know, you can in a long form sales letter, you include stories and things like that. Right. How did how did you work with the, the packaging? Well, with the packaging, the first thing I did was go on a shopping trip. I went to, um, there's a store, a, a beauty product store locally here and went in there to see, well, what do other companies do? Mm -hmm. You know, that's always a good way to start. What do other people do mm -hmm. that are successful? And try to imitate that. Uh, so I saw, okay, they all have this kind of information, and that's what I have to include. And, and, and I did include a lot of information, and we had to cut it down and cut it down, and it went through several iterations. But it was a challenge to try and put the uniqueness of the product across in as few words as possible. Right. Because uh, as you mentioned, I'm more of a long form kind of girl. I write a lot of, co I write really long copy. Um, I also came up with the tagline for the product. So we had to have all of that on there as well. And then once I saw what other companies were doing, it gave me at least a framework yeah. of how to start. Right. So what were um, they doing? Because I could see, you know, people at natural and they put, you know, gluten free or whatever it is, they could put right, a bunch right. of buzzwords on there. What did you find that was working for, for that, for the labeling? Definitely the 100% natural, because uh, believe it or not, most skincare products are not 100% natural. Hmm. This definitely was. Uh, I highlighted like two or three of the main ingredients, uh, the, and which were the unique ones. Well, we had the apple and st stem cell technology. We had a, a special type of skin defense probiotic. You know, the things that other... Um, big skincare companies did not have. I made sure we highlighted that. Mm -hmm. We only had room for maybe two or three. Mm -hmm. And then we even legally had to have um, the ingredient l label had to say certain things legally. Mm -hmm. So we took care of that. Uh, the ingredients and the little piece of paper that you get on the inside when you open up the box, we had to take care of all of that. A lot of, a lot of um, legalese with that, right? Yes, a lot of legalese. And we had to pass it by the lawyers a lot. And then there's always the fights between creative and the lawyers. You know, it was a two-year process before wow. we were finally able to take it to market. Wow. It, I, I want to go back to the, the Juvenon one because I, I wrote a note down. I had a question. You know, you mentioned the pictures um, of the, you know, a lot of older people are buying the supplements and yes. enjoy. How do you determine at what point do you kind of sell the pleasure as opposed to someone kind of hunched over in pain pictures? Uh, you do very few pain or old people photos. Mm -hmm. um, those, if you ever do those, you want to do those at the beginning when you're talking about um, the emotional aspect of what they're going through, mm -hmm. the lack of energy, the tiredness. Uh, then when you start to introduce the product is when you put in all those fantastic lifestyle photos. Mm. And graphic designers uh, have a way of choosing photos. Uh, for example, you always want a photo where someone is either looking at the camera or looking up 
toward the outside of the promo piece. You never want to have someone that's staring down or staring in toward the gutter of the piece. You know, those are the little tricks that graphic designers use. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and you want to have things that people look at those photos and say, yeah, that's me. If you notice, if you look at the photos, the photos tend to skew a little younger. Uh, I'm talking people 40s, 50s. Because mm -hmm. uh, 60 year olds, 70 year olds, they never want to think of themselves as old. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and that's true. Um, so you want to show like a very ma mature, active, attractive people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's You're giving them the promise of this is what your life can be like. Right, right. So I want to get into some of the campaigns that didn't work and, and why early on, but what's another good one? I want to like stay on this one that once it did and why. So what what's another good one uh, successful campaign that and in some of the components of it? Okay. Um, I, I feel like I'd spend the next two hours asking you about successful campaigns. But <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you for one more. And <laughs> okay. Um, another one is for um, another new product. It's called Advanced Adrenal Formula. Mm -hmm. uh, once again. Adrenals is something that people don't really know a lot about. Yeah. So that in itself was a big plus. Um, so you kind of have to educate people about your adrenal glands. Yeah. One big uh, symptom of adrenal failure is being really tired, especially in the afternoons. You, and then you get like your second wind at 6 o'clock at night and then you can't fall asleep. Uh, and it's becoming a big problem in our very high-stress society. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even realize they have it. So I spoke to the doctor who was a, the big spokesman for this product, and he got me passionate about adrenal failure and how important it is and how a lot of doctors don't even know what it is. Yeah. So I started this mailing um, with a case history, typical case history of someone who had adrenal failure, and uh, the format of the piece was a Magalog. It was a um, full page, um, 8 by 11 Magalog. So for people who don't know what a Magalog is, just explain it for a second. Uh, it, a ma this would be a Magalog. Okay. Except this is a large size. This is what they call a tabloid size. A smaller size, let me see if I have one here. I do not have one here, but it would be a smaller size, um, about the size of a sheet of paper. And it's bound, it kind of looks like a magazine mm -hmm. or a newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the format that we used. And we educated people about adrenal glands and why you have to take care of them. And then you talk about the different ingredients in the formula. And I frankly wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. Well, it wound up doing gangbusters. Uh, the headline was, um, here's the real reason why you're tired all the time. And everyone could... Everyone could relate to that. <laughs> absolutely. They can all relate to that. And, you know, also, too, a lot of people keep taking energy drinks. Uh, one big symptom of adrenal failure is if you have, like, 10 cups of coffee a day or you drink Red Bull, Red Bull all day. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of adrenal failure. Uh, so just educating people to that yeah. wound up becoming a very successful product. Who do they mail it to? Do they mail it to current customers or outside people? They start mailing it to their house list. Um, if things will always work easiest to your house list. Mm -hmm. um, if things are like mediocre to your house list, then you know, well, okay, this package needs help. Uh, so the first thing they do is mail it to the house list. If it does really well, then they will mail it, um, roll it out in acquisition. Mm -hmm. So, what, so were they selling a supplement or what was what was this for? It was a supplement. Mm -hmm. It was a supplement for adrenal failure. And uh, you. Uh, it was one of those that you start with a heavier dose for the first month and then you get on a maintenance dose, which was a great way to sell it too because you get people to buy, you know, the six-month deal to start off with. So right. your average order is is bigger and, yeah. and that's all the kinds of things that you're looking for. Yes, that's what I was going to ask too of how they position that and how you position it because obviously it's not cheap to mail these these maglogs out. So you no, have to recoup the money. Do they 
they um, have different, do you have different options of buy one or buy six months or how does oh, the yes. offer look like? Yep, the typical offer, and this is true of just about all my clients, is a 631. So it's buy six months um, and you get, you know, a heavily discounted price. Sometimes you'll get premiums. Sometimes you'll get additional bottles free. It just, uh, that is really something that the client tells me. Mm -hmm. um, they ha they know their margins, they know if they can afford to give out free product, product or not, um, but almost always they get some type of premium. It's mm -hmm. usually a couple of free reports, maybe they'll get a free bottle of a related product, um, for example, um, they might, if they're doing a joint supplement, they might get a rub-on, a cream-free. Like with an ingestible and a rub-on. Right. Exactly. Uh, then you get your three month supply, and then the one month supply, which is you pay the full price, you pay the shipping, and and that's it. You get no yeah. deal whatsoever. Most people actually go for the six month deal. Really? Which surprises me too. But most people do go for the six month deal, and then the three month deal is the close second. But it's all about getting that higher average order. Mm -hmm. uh, Another thing that clients do that I always try to talk them out of whenever possible is adding auto ship. Uh, clients love auto ship because they love like getting, a continuity. Yes, they love the continuity, but customers hate it, and it will depress your response as much as fifty percent. Really? Yes. Oh wow! So I always say, please stay away from auto ship. Please, please. Oh, uh, that brings up a, a interesting question, which is what else do you try and talk clients out of? Because I'm sure, you know, there's a, a balance there because they're saying, okay, we want, they're paying you to do this, but you're the expert. And, right. but they may disagree with some of the things that you know will work. So what are some of the other things that you try and talk clients out of? Ah, uh, interesting. Um, one big thing we I We can send this to your clients, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, aside from auto ship, yeah. um, I always try to talk them out of even marketing certain types of products. Um, one big thing that clients love are digestive supplements, probiotics namely. Mm -hmm. Now, probiotic supplements were great 10, even 5 years ago because it still wasn't quite in the mainstream yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but they love probiotic supplements and marketing them now in direct mail and in the age of the internet and TV commercials with Jamie Lee Curtis, right. they can buy them anywhere. Mm -hmm. So don't market a probiotic supplement. Mm -hmm. Sell them, at, use that as a back end product. In other words, sell them to the customers that you already have. Mm -hmm. Don't try it in acquisition. Another one that I try to talk them out of is fish oil. Hmm. Uh, fish oil is becoming a very difficult sell these days because everyone does the same product. It can heal a lot of the same things, and you can Not buy unique. it in the supermarket. You're looking for something that's more unique as like a front end product. Exactly, exactly. And sometimes it's even coming up with a hook for a well established product. Um, you know, they sell it very successfully for a long time and then it starts to fatigue and you start coming up with a new concept. And sometimes a client will fall in love with a concept that's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. And they'll insist on doing it. And it's like, okay, I will do it. You're paying me to do it. Because it's your reputation exactly. online also. Exactly. Exactly. And I'll do the best job I can, but if it bombs... You know, it bombs. I mean, that happened to me a few years ago. I was dealing with a client who was new to the supplement business, and he said to me, well, I, I'm thinking of introducing a new supplement, but I'm not sure if it should be a um, fish oil or a joint product. And You're I'm like, like, fish oil or probiotic? You're like, neither. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, you know what? Do a joint product. Um, there's a lot of really cool things out there for joints. Fish oil, everybody does. He did the fish oil, and he said, but this is great fish oil. It's from, like, the Arctic North. And I said, everybody else's is too. But it's really high quality, and he wound up selling it for, like, $50 a bottle. Wow. 
and I did the promotion and we did a really good job of it but it failed because his price point was crazy mm -hmm. uh, where in the meantime if he did a joint supplement he could have sold it for a lot cheaper people are always looking for joint supplements they have some fabulous ingredients now he would have been a lot more successful so if someone's new in the supplement business and they want to get into it what kind of product should they be thinking about um, I would say look in Look and see what other people are doing. Preventive is very hard to sell. So what is preventive? Liver, immunity, that's really hard. Uh, digestion is really hard. Uh, try to have something unique that's for pain. Pain is always really good. Mm -hmm. Vision is popular, but getting more difficult. Uh, but if, you, if there is a unique product in there for vision, that's great. Um, diabetes is a huge hot button. A few years ago, it was very difficult to make diabetes supplements sell. But now that is becoming more and more popular. And another thing uh, which I believe could be huge is hearing. Hmm. Uh, populations getting older. Uh, all that loud music that we listened to when we were in our 20s is affecting us now. And people don't realize they have a hearing problem. Everyone around them does, their family does, but they don't like wearing hearing aids. They're yeah. embarrassing. Uh, so I think hearing supplements is something that's going to be huge in the next few years. Talk about the diabetes thing and about, because you did a campaign for, uh, I think, Sugar Solution? Yes, yes, Dr. Hyman. Uh, they came to us with a headline of, um, we want to be number one on the New York Times bestseller list. We want you to make our book number one. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, this will be fun. And it was an online promotion. Online is really hard to make work. And what was strange, too, is that people had to, if they wanted to buy the book, they had to click off the landing page buy the book off of Amazon.com, and then come back to the original landing page. What were they coming back for? Uh, their premiums. Oh. They were going to be downloading all of these premiums from the bank, uh, from the page, all these yeah. like free reports and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, if this works, it's going to be interesting. You know, it's really hard to do that and, and tell people, don't stay on Amazon, make sure you come back. But we did it. We found a way to do it. Um, their webmaster was responsible for making that all work. And we did what we had to do. And the client was very happy with the copy. And then we found out about six weeks later that the book did make number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Congratulations. Thank you. We were absolutely thrilled. Uh, never thought it would happen. And it did. And we wound up doing, um, there's a blood sugar solution cookbook that we worked on. Mm -hmm. There was a um, video program that Dr. Hyman put, it, put out. We worked on that as well. Uh, so once again, that was something that was just beyond our wildest dreams, how well that worked. So what were some of the components that you, you remember working really well or that you thought at the time, you know, you included because this is going to, this, I mean, New York Times bestseller, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember when the client told me that, I'm like, okay. And I just hung up the phone and started laughing. <laughs> oh, all right. This is going to be good. Online promotion for a book. Okay. Uh, that was just a single online promotion. So it was a long form landing page, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of testimonials. And what was great is that Dr. Hyman had a lot of very prestigious clients. Yeah, I saw that. I we mean, there's able... one video with him and Bill Clinton, I think. Yes, yes. So we didn't use the Bill Clinton quote. We weren't allowed to, but he was able to put the video on the page. Um, there's a quote there by Dr. Oz. I mean, he always gets attention. Uh, there were some other, like, really famous people that Dr. Hyman worked with. I mean, that stuff is gold mm -hmm. to add those there were some fabulous patient testimonials we were able to add and his program was really easy and as long as you tell people yeah you know it's easy it's effortless it doesn't take a lot of time um, as unrealistic as it sounds people want to be able to take a pill or follow a diet yeah. and wake up the next morning you know more energetic and 10 pounds right. younger Right. And 
know, <laughs> and it's totally unrealistic, but our job is to make them believe that, yes, that will happen. Yeah. How do you know if you can include a testimony or a quote or not? Like you mentioned uh, the Bill Clinton one, you couldn't, how do you, would you even know that? Because there's a video online that they're talking to each other. Yep. Yep. Uh, we just put them in and then the client can tell us where to dial back. I got it. So that's what we, that's what basically we did. Yeah. But having a testimonial from Bill Clinton, it's like, wow. You know, especially with what Bill Clinton went through with his heart surgery. He had so many complications, uh, you know, to have him promote the doctor. It's like, wow, yeah. how cool is that? <laughs> now, for people who don't have Bill Clinton, what are some of the components that they can use from that? Um, and if they don't know all these famous people, or what, what components can they use from that campaign with the sugar solution? Well, uh, there are a lot of patient testimonials. Mm -hmm. So when possible, um, I always try to get some really good testimonials from my clients. Many times, though, there aren't any because it's a brand new product. Uh, so we just have to use really good examples of clinical studies and very good sales copy of what they can realistically expect when they mm -hmm. start taking the product. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is a technique that I always use. Um, many. Uh, supplements, natural products, herbal supplements take anywhere from four to eight weeks to work. Right. Uh, it takes a while. It's not like you just take a pill and in a day or a week it, it starts working. It needs to build up. Exactly. Exactly. And I will try to tell people that in the copy. Um, you know, and I'll say, well, here are the real results that you can expect. After two weeks, you'll probably feel this. After four weeks, you might find you have more energy. Um, after eight weeks, everything really kicks in. Mm -hmm. So I really recommend that you go for the six-month supply. This way you pay the lowest price per bottle, and you can really feel all the benefits of the formula. And if you mm -hmm. don't like it, you can always send it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Giving people somewhat realistic expectations is a good way to go. Yeah. And um, Donna, before you talked about a campaign that didn't do so well um, because of the, the client wanted the fish oil, what's another campaign that didn't work as well? And so we can understand, because so sometimes we learn the most from those campaigns that, that don't. Yes. And, uh, and that has to be a promotion that I did for Vital Choice Seafood out in Washington State. They were a wonderful company. What they do is sell wild Alaskan salmon and various fish type products and they market them like literally freeze them right off the boat in Alaska oh, wow. and market it throughout the country. And it was interesting to me because here on the East Coast it's kind of hard for us to find wild Alaskan salmon. Uh, so getting to know this company and and they were very um environmentally aware sustainable they had a very nice company ethic great people very high quality product they even sent me samples of the product and the ironic thing is i don't eat fish i hate fish uh, but what i did was serve it to my husband and my daughter for dinner and they said oh my god this is so good and I had them be my testimonials. And so we wrote up the package. And since it was a food, we were able to use wonderful food photography. Um, the owner had a great story behind it, how he was a fisherman up in Alaska. It's like deadliest catch all over again. Right, right. Fabulous story. The story of the salmon and how it gets fresh to your table. I was so proud of this copy and the way it looked, and it was just fabulous. And it bombed. Hmm. I was so disappointed. And I think it bombed for two reasons. The first was the time of year they mailed it. Um, I, I asked them, and the marketing director asked them to mail it like around March, right before barbecue season. They instead decided to mail it in November. So it got lost in all of the Thanksgiving, cattle. Christmas Thanksgiving, type of Christmas. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But they said, no, 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 no. We are going to mail it this time of year. Why were they so insistent on that? 
I think that it was something to do with sales numbers okay. or something. I don't know. But I really, that was one of the things that a client didn't listen. Yeah. You know, I really begged for them, please, we talk about barbecuing salmon. You know, even one of the things that we were selling was like a salmon plank, a cedar plank. Where you put it on there. Yeah, exactly. those are amazing. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, you know, this is like for barbecue season. No, 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 no. We have to mail it this year. And it didn't do well. I think that was part of it. I also think that the offer was watered down because rather than just offer them the uh, $89.95 Wild Alaskan Salmon gift basket, we also asked them to buy the fish oil capsules. And I think that offering that second choice of the fish oil capsules uh, gave kind of watered down the offer. And I think it was like typical, you give someone too many choices and it will affect your response. And I think that was part of the problem as well. Yeah. Um, I truly didn't think it was the copy, but then again, you could say, um, <laughs> but I really don't believe it was the copy or the design. The design was beautiful. I believe it was those two reasons. Yeah. And they do say, um, you know, the 40-40-20 rule, it's 40% lists, 40% offer, and 20% copy. And I think this was a big case of 40% of... The uh, offer got watered offer. down. Yeah, to, and the time of year. So aren't you curious? Did you tell, make them send it in March just to see what I would happen? begging, begging, and they never did it. Like without the fish oil and send it in March and see what would happen. Exactly. I was saying, I asked them that so many times because I really, to this day, I still have faith in that package, but they never did it. Yeah. They just, they were new to direct mail. They didn't understand testing. And I think they just said, no, we already threw away enough money. We're not going to do it again. And they got scared. Yeah. 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 Um, so I also want to hear about some of your favorite fascinations and headlines. Ah, Okay. Um, some of my favorite fascinations and headlines. Thinking of what some of them are offhand is kind of difficult because when you write all of this copy, you kind of you write it and you then do the you just, research. Yeah. You do the research. What's a recent one that you worked on? Oh, well, I'm working on something actually right now uh, for a, a company where. It's an anti-aging product, and we're trying to think of ways to present it differently. And so I'm taking the angle of, um, you know, think of the front page of, an, of a newspaper, and you put in like 200 point type the word banned in really big letters, and uh, it's a, something like courageous scientists from University of California and the Linus Polling Institute reveal their secret for rejuvenating your cells and fighting off aging. Um, read their clinical studies inside. You know, th that's another angle I'm, I'm kind of working on at the moment. Yeah. And I, I see the format for that kind of as a newspaper. It makes it sound really new and different. And you can have uh, interesting fascinations um, on the outside, kind of like, you know, the secret for cell energy that your doctor doesn't know, see mm -hmm. page 15. Um, you know, five things you can do to improve your memory right now, see page 30, yeah. Think, things like that. I like to hear your working mind in progress. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then there's always that nice laundry list. I call it the laundry list of benefits. You know, how uh, you can improve your joint aches, memory, heart health, artery, just by doing this one simple thing. Find out what it is on page 10. Yeah. You know, all, all different techniques to kind of lead the person into the package. And also, as much as we want to think people read every single part of your copy, <laughs> um, people get a Magalog or even a component package and scan it. They scan the subheads, they scan the headlines, they look at the pictures, they read the captions. Mm -hmm. And then we can just hope that they will go back and read the rest of the copy. So you have mm -hmm. to make sure everything is very compelling all the way through. Yeah. And that can be a challenge. That gets me to my next question because you mentioned some terms. And when I was thinking of, I want to ask Donna some of the roadblocks and challenges. and 
I want to hear what you what you have for Robux and challenges. But one thing, my question is, I see for this like FDA and FTC, and I know you've written on this. That can be That's, a challenge. What what right. verbiage you can and can't include? Can you talk about that? Uh, you cannot mention diseases. Uh, you can't say it helps arthritis, it helps Alzheimer's. You can never, ever, ever, ever mention cancer. Um, <clears throat> and there isn't really a structure, unfortunately, of I, can, I can't say this, I can say this. Yeah. So much of the rules constantly change that you have to really see what the client's tolerance level is. Mm -hmm. Um, some clients have a tolerance level of what I say, you know, a one, where they are afraid to say anything. And that really ties your hands as a copywriter. Um, it, you know, they're just so afraid that it, it waters down your copy completely and the copy doesn't work. That has happened to me a couple of times. Uh, there was a vision supplement that I worked on uh, for a huge company. This was about six or seven years ago. And I couldn't mention the word vision. <laughs> what are you supposed to mention? It's like one of those games, like a Pictionary game where you can't, <laughs> don't say vision, but you can say. Yeah, yeah. Eye health. I'm like, seriously? Eye health? It's, it's not like, a conversational term necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Eye health, you know, and it's a vision supplement. There is vision in the name, and I can say eye health. I mean, ridiculous things like that. And then the copy bombed. Oh, gee, well, <laughs> a lot of times it's very convenient to blame the freelancer because the copy bombed uh, when it was really their legal department. Uh, so you run across that, which is really very challenging and very aggravating. And then you have clients that say, yeah, well, you know what? You write what you have to write, and then we'll dial it back. Um, some, some clients don't care. They say, write what you want to write, and then if the FTC sends me a letter, they send me a letter, and then we'll worry about it later. So it, the rules are different for everyone, uh, but I do try to write FDA compliant as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I know not to make disease claims. Mm -hmm. um, you can't say things like instant relief. Um, some clients won't even allow you to say pain. Really? You could say, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. But they'll let you say, say swelling or tenderness, um, but you can't say pain. But other clients are perfectly fine with that. So really the rules are different. It all, it's all about the tolerance level. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that I have started to run into is I do copy for some clients in Germany. And the EU is incredibly strict. We think ours is bad. Really? The EU is like 100 times worse than we are. And these German clients, they're fabulous to work with. Uh, what I do is write the copy, and then they have it translated by a German copywriter who is, winds up to be a friend of mine. We've become friendly. That's, oh, wow. And, and their whole thing, my German client, is, you know what, you say what you have to say. Because if we listen to the EU rules, we're not going to sell anything. <laughs> and then when, we'll dial it back when we have to dial it back. But we don't want to, you know, tie your hands. Yeah. So I try to be FDA compliant. And I leave it to their German translator. But so far, every promotion I've done for them has worked. Really? What kind of stuff do they sell? Uh, they did a um, colon cleanse supplement. Uh, one, another one was a joint health supplement. I also did a newsletter promotion for another German company, um, Better Health and Living Naturally, uh, that wound up doing fantastic. They love using American copywriters over there. Uh, they, the, the German audience seems to respond very well to the American conversational uh, type of copy, which is interesting because it's so much less formal than what the Europeans are used to. Yeah. So I guess it gets noticed for that. Yeah. And they all, the uh, German copywriters also don't have the experience level that we have. So it's, it's very interesting when you work for European clients. Doesn't all this work, Donna, with skincare and supplements make you want to have your own skincare and supplement line? <laughs> you, you know, it does, but it doesn't because I know what's involved. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've learned what's involved and um, you know what goes behind it. Yeah. But one great way that actually I started to learn about copywriting and great direct response is by watching infomercials and QVC and HSN and I tell all of the junior copywriters that I work with that's the first thing you have to do immerse yourself into direct response television uh, see what they use see what it takes to get people to pick up the phone I mean, the QVC is excellent for this you know yeah. all the different ways that they put together urgency, the clock on the bottom, the amount of, of things sold, uh, the people calling in and saying, oh my god, this was the best pair of jeans ever, love them, <laughs> you know, all of these different right. techniques that will get you to pick up the phone, and if you do pick up the phone and want it, think about what made you decide to do that, mm -hmm. and that is what you have to put into your copy. Yeah, yeah reverse engineer what makes you actually act. Exactly. What's um? Who are some of your mentors and some of the best advice you've you've gotten? Well, um, my mentors were Gene Schwartz, who was one of the legends of copywriting, uh, the burn disease out of your body. Uh, he, that was his greatest headline. Um, <clears throat> I love the things that Herschel Gordon Lewis does. He's still around. He's probably well into his eighties, but I just love the headlines he comes up with and the way he talks about it. He's fabulous. Uh, Joan Throckmorton was a um, big influence of mine. She's no longer with us, but she wrote a great book, Winning Direct Response Advertising, which I recommend. Mm -hmm. And there were there are many good copywriters that I also work with in the business that mm -hmm. have really helped bring my skills up to the next level. Uh, that's one thing in this business, even though I've been writing direct response now for close to 25 years, I'm always learning. I'm always trying to do better. I'm always trying to tweak things more. It's a never-ending process. Yeah. And I want to get also your best piece of advice for people. Maybe they're uh, you know, getting alternative health supplements or maybe they're just a, a copywriter. What's your best piece of, piece of advice for maybe a young copywriter? Be persistent, keep on learning, gather together a swipe file, um, get on a bunch of product lists of the niche or niches you're interested in, learn who the competitors are, and don't always make it online. Um, the online promotions are great, but you want to get on actual mailing lists. Be passionate about what you're writing about. Don't decide you want to write in the financial niche because you make a lot of money. Yeah. If you really care about it, that's going to show through in your copy. Uh, if you love what you do and what you're writing about, you will become successful. The money will come. Yeah. Uh, immerse yourself, as I said, I am a huge believer in immersing yourself in direct response television. Watch the home shopping channels. It sounds silly but I highly recommend it. Yeah. Watch those infomercials on Saturday and Sunday mornings. You learn so much. Yeah. Taking those things. And it works by osmosis. You know, you'd be surprised at the things that come to you after you write these things. Yeah. And Donna, I have one last question. I appreciate your time. Before I ask it, tell people where they can find out more about you, what you're working on now, and you know, to reach out and thank you for, for sharing this great information. Well, I am on LinkedIn. Um, so you can find me on LinkedIn, um, my website, you can uh, drop me a note on my website and I have to actually be updating that pretty soon with some new work, but that's um, copybydoyle.com and uh, feel free to drop me a line. Yeah, there's some great information on there from me, portfolio and writing tips and everything like that. So people should definitely check out Copy by Doyle. And my last question, Donna, is what's, you have a lot of you know, you've been doing this for a long time. What's one of your proudest moments? I would have to say System 41 and the whole product launch for that. Um, that's number one because I was really in with that from the beginning. And I'd say number two was uh, Dr. Hyman's blood sugar solution and working to make that a, a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. I mean, it's just so amazing. And we never thought we could do it. And we did. Um, number three is becoming 
successful and being able to work at home and work the way I want to work. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't easy to get started as a freelancer. There were so many times that I was ready to throw my computer out the window and say, the hell with this, I just can't. I'm going to go back on staff. Mm. Uh, but we persisted and I persisted and marketed myself and then slowly but surely it just turned. The tide just turned and became busier and busier and busier. Yeah. Well, Donna, I just want to be the first one to thank you so much. This has been valuable. I feel like I can go on and on and ask you about these campaigns, but um, I know you have to go. But thank you so much <laughs> for your time. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. This was great. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Okay, thanks a lot.